Hello, lovely people. I have three things to talk about this week, and I'm going to kick things off with a booktube favourite, and that is Six of Crows by Leah Bardugo. I think I'm on the Leah Bardugo train now. Um, I read Shadow and Bone, and I didn't, I would like to make it clear, I did not dislike Shadow and Bone. I also have felt no need to continue with the series. And I think one of the things is that I just didn't really connect with any of the characters. I felt like there were some interesting ideas going on. Um, I wasn't really rooted in caring hugely for like the main characters and stuff. So I, I was just like, I'll just see. Maybe I'll pick it up, maybe I won't. And time has passed and I haven't. But I thought I would give Six of Crows a try because I have watched people on booktube who've said that they didn't really like Shadow and Bone but they love Six of Crows. I had a cracking time reading this. Um, as a start point, oh, I should give a, a tiny plot description if you are not familiar with Six of Crows. This is set in the Grishaverse. I think it's set after the events of that first trilogy, but I don't know how they ended, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, but this is essentially like a group of um, young criminals who are um, recruited to do this seemingly impossible heist. Um, and shenanigans ensue. Um, one thing I really liked about this, um, the f I felt like the start, maybe 100 to 200 pages, were potentially slower plot-wise, but that's because we were really taking the time to get to know the characters. And bearing in mind I said that in Shadow and Bone one of the things I struggled with was that I didn't connect to the characters. I actually really appreciated having that time, because it meant by the time we got into the real meat and action of the plot, I was I felt very rooted in the characters and I cared about them a lot more and I had a better understanding of just who they were and how they relate to each other and that sort of thing. So that's something that I really loved. I felt much more invested in that. Um, I, one thing I will say is that in my head, I keep thinking that these characters are way older than they are. They're actually like 16, 17, which I find, I, in my head, they should be like 25. That's just the thing I feel. I feel like these should be like young adults rather than like young adults, 16 to 17. They're like... 2025 in my brain <laughs> so like you know maybe i want this to be new adult i don't know genres you know after that like 200 page build up then we had like fast paced heist which i really enjoyed i haven't read a lot of heist narratives um i know this has been adapted to tv show the shadow and bone grishaverse series i'm really excited to see how this works as a tv show i think this would work really well in a visual medium um because it's just like the Oh, I don't know, like, the heist from all of its many po points, it's just, it was, I was gripped, and I was like, how are we getting out of this? I'm sure there's a way out of this, but, like, what is it? Um, so, yes, there was, I, I felt danger to characters, and I think that's because this felt a bit darker. There were, you know, like, brutality is done in this. These are criminals. They are not, like, nice people, necessarily. But um, I, I, was, I was rooted in the fact that, like, things could happen and people could die and that sort of thing. And I quite liked that sense of danger and threat. It ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. I will definitely be reading the second book, but um, I just <laughs> I just think that I got on with this so much more and I'm now hooked. And it makes me wonder if I should go back and finish reading Shadow and Bone now that I've like hooked into Leah Bardugo in this. I don't know, but I had a really fun time. I enjoyed it. I do wish that they were slightly older. Um, <laughs> Also, I was, like, heavily rooting for, like, a Jesper Inej Kaz thruple for the first half of this. And then, like, shenanigans ensued, and I was like, maybe I'm rooting for other couples now. I don't know. But there have a lot... I'm a bit of a multi-shipper, I think. So I, there were, like, loads of different, like, little tiny threads going on, and I was just like, have at it, guys. <laughs> Let's just go there. Um, and I do now understand the context of... Um, I will have you without armour, or I will have you not at all, Kaz Brecker. And now I have emotions about that. So yes, it's essentially, thanks guys, I think I've cracked it. I think I've got on with Leah Bardugo now, and I'm excited for the second one. I went for this second novel because I fancied something completely different. I actually had kind of a similar experience reading it. So, this is The Ethic Serpent by Sarah Perry. This is historical fiction set during the Victorian e era. We are largely, we're following a number of different characters, largely following Cora Seaborn, whose husband has just died. She's very into scientific things, so she's very into like natural scientists and fossil hunting and that sort of thing. Um, there's a surgeon who is doing like cutting edge 
surgeon, surgical techniques. Um, essentially, in the wake of her husband dying, she goes and stays in Essex and is investigating this rumour of this Essex serpent, which so say has been um, woken from the deep and is haunting this little place. Um, in investigating this, she meets this reverend and his family, and then, like, stuff ensues. The reason I said that this was a weirdly similar reading experience is this is another novel which is incredibly character-driven. I will say the plot... there is a plot to this. I wasn't necessarily reading this for the plot, I was reading this because I became very immersed in the characters and their voices. So, um, it was weird. I didn't have one character-driven book after another, but... Um, I wasn't expecting to get in as into this as I did, and actually I had a really, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, number one, because of that character, like, definition, I think. One of the things that was enjoyable about this to me was just seeing the way that characters orbited each other, and impacted each other, and like, people tried laying claims to people, and that sort of thing, and some people rejected those claims to them, and I just, there was a nuance of affection and interaction. There are people who love people who don't love them back, but they still interact. And there are people who love pe love other people that um, objectively s you shouldn't love, but like, it's capable for someone to feel different types of love for multiple people at the same time and that not be somehow loving the other person less and stuff like this. This way that human relationships can be messy, and the way that you can have fundamental disagreements with people about, like, religion and science and stuff, especially in this particular type, place in Victorian era in where we are with evolution and religion and stuff, and yet still care so deeply for those people. All these sorts of, like, nuanced, messy, emotional interweavings is what really drew me into this. Um, another thing I will say is this mystery of the Essex Serpent, it really built up a very, um, as it went on, you felt like the pressure building in this little town, and I enjoyed that pressure building and wondering, like, is it all going to be for nothing? Is it real? How? All that sort of thing. Um, a critique, I would say, is that there are a number, this is definitely not the most plot-driven novel, there are a number of plots that wiggle and weave all over the place. Some of the plots seemed to be dropped completely. There were a couple of plot lines where I was like, I thought we were going to have more from this than we did, but we didn't. And that's fine. I didn't bother me, but I could see how it would bother some other people. But another thing I loved is also, I do love reading books about women who are passionate about um, seeking out knowledge, whatever that knowledge is. In this case, it's, it is natural history and fossils, but then also like, um, you know, like geology, botany, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's something that interests me, so that's something I like reading about, and, um, yeah, so I did, I really enjoyed that angle of things. Um, but yes, I just, <laughs> I also really enjoyed this one, and it really took me by surprise, and I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. Um, and I, there are people in my life who if I lent this book to, I think that they'd hate it, because I think it would not be what they were after, but for some reason I read it at the perfectly right moment, and I really enjoyed it, and I had a cracking time, and now I want to see what else she's written. <laughs> The final one I'm going to talk about is, I did not read the entirety of this collection, I just read A Study in Scarlet, which is the first of the Sherlock Holmes books by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have read Sherlock Holmes in the past, I definitely read Hound of the Baskervilles when I was a kid, I think I've read more, I think my pappy used to read them to me when we stayed over with my grandparents, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, but I've decided to try to just read through them in publication order across a vast period of time. Um, so it was interesting reading the first Sherlock Holmes. You know, um, I think I am, uh, along with many other people, very familiar with Sherlock Holmes through adaptation more than I would be through the original books. So it was interesting to read the original books and the seeds of Sherlock and this the development of the relationship with John Watson and that sort of thing, these things which were quite familiar with being interpreted, what was it actually like on the first one? Um, I forgot that Mormonism is a whole thing in this first one, and I just saw Book of Mormon recently, so I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm picking up on these things now. Um, I think what I am interested in is I don't read a lot of I don't read true crime at all. I don't really like crime fiction very much. I do like mysteries, especially, like, Sherlock Holmes is a lot of it to do with, like, 
how does Sherlock Holmes go about unravelling a problem and a mystery? And I think that's what interests me. It's also why I like stuff like Franny Fisher or like the Rivers of London series. So I'm not super into crime fiction. I do find it very interesting to hear the unravelings and the, well, I noticed this, which made me think this, and blah, 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 like, making those leaps and those connections and stuff like that. I'm way more interested in that than in, like, necessarily reading true crime and how real crimes are solved and blah, 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 because that just kind of stresses me out. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this. It was in a style that I sort of expected, and the reason I wanted to read this is because um, the Victorian setting of the Essex Serpent and the way that she mimicked that in her prose style made me then want to read Victorian fiction so I thought I would read this. So they sort of fed into each other slightly. But um, yes, I will definitely be con continuing with this and um, I'm looking forward to some more fun Sherlock Holmes times. That's everything I wanted to talk about this week. What are your favourite novels you've read that are very character driven? Um, or does that bother you? Are you like a plot reader? I've always thought I was a plot heavy reader. I always thought that if it came down to it, I would choose books with plot over books with character that are deeply rooted in characters. And I think that's just because I don't really get on well with um, character-driven novels that are like contemporary, like we're just following so-and-so as they live. But I think if it's a book that is heavily rooted in characters, but there is actually, <laughs> what I'm saying is I want both good characters and good plot, which don't we all, you know. I don't know, I've just been mulling it over. But anyway, um, have you read any of these? Do you have thoughts on any of these? All that and anything else you'd like to share in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for something different.